Well, hello everybody, back at it again once here at the Beyond Guitars workbench, and uh, we're continuing on with the restoration of this neck. This is the uh, Gibson Master Tone sent to me by Mike. It was his dad's, and we're right in the middle of restoring this banjo here. We have all the frets stripped, and we are gonna move on to leveling the neck. And a big question for you, because I need your input, so that's coming right up after this. Well, on the bench right now, I have something just to kind of demonstrate what I was talking about uh, in an earlier video about how mahogany changes color over time and that I could tell this wood hadn't been stained. Well, it is kind of stained just from the environment and missing its finish. That's why we, we like to keep the finish on a neck, um, you know, or other, other wood products, you know, with a finish on them, it protects the wood. But uh, yeah, it turns darker. This is a new neck here. It's uh, not finished, it has never been on an instrument. And uh, I sell these, I use them on banjo projects and so forth. Uh, I don't actually make these, but I get these from Saga Musical Instruments, and they've been really good. But I uh, just wanted to show you here the difference in color. Now I realize too that uh, you know species, there is a general term mahogany, and it doesn't give you an exact species, but generally speaking, mahogany has a lot in common and uh, all the different varieties, and they also, also tend to start out lighter like this one and get darker. So uh, general, generally speaking, but, um, but it seems to hold pretty true. Um, over time, they, the wood darkens. That's all there is to it. Uh, so I have a uh, kind of a quandary here because um, one thing I said was I, I didn't intend to fill the divots in the uh, fretboard. And uh, I like to call it fretboard versus fingerboard because it's got frets in it, right? On this fretboard, uh, we have some pretty good divots in it from where Hope you can see these uh, in different angles and different uh, different lighting reflections, but uh, pretty well worn here. But my question is, I know I will not be able to sand out all of that or even much of it. And the argument is that uh, if you do a fill job on these, you'll always see it. So why bother? Well. You see it now, and uh, if I were to fill them, you'd see it then. So that's kind of moot. There is no um, advantage or disadvantage to that. They'll always be visible. We'll just have to give get, make that a given fact. Um, but the other advantage is that it would be flat. So, of course, you know, maybe we don't get two advantages from it, but we do get the flatness back. And, uh, you know, in a reflection, you don't really notice it. I Once it's fixed, I... I've done these before, and they come out pretty nice, actually. And I, I would argue that they are a little less visible once they've been fixed. But, uh, you know, I just like to make it the best it can be, and I wonder what you guys think. Do you think I ought to make an effort to flatten out these fingernail divots or uh, just leave them? But we'll see what it looks like once I get some sanding done on it here. Uh, just to kind of review also... Um, the last video, I pulled the frets, and you can see how green the frets are. But, uh, you know, I will attribute that to tarnish still, as nickel will will tarnish in a green color as well as copper. So if there's any copper in the alloy, that would contribute. But nickel has a green tarnish to it. I just think that it uh, kind of um, sifted down into the glue that I didn't know was there. And uh, I will admit also that the goop that I found along the edges of the frets that I started scraping out with my fret addressing uh, file early in last video, uh, I believe that that was mostly glue and uh, mostly that green nasty glue we're looking at here in this uh, pile of frets. But uh, we're done with those. I'm glad they're out of the way and um, did, did a little measuring here. I want to show you how to measure the fret slot. Now I've got a feeler gauge. Uh, this feeler gauge uh, is nothing special. This is another tool I picked up at Harbor Freight, but you can get these at auto parts stores. Everybody uses them when they're doing tolerance measuring. Now, um, the typical fret slot 
if you look at Stumac and some other advice you get from luthiers all around, 22,000s, 23,000s is about typical for a fret slot. And then uh, your fret tang may be about 9,000s bigger than that or thicker. So uh, I've got my new fret material here. I've got the old to measure and I've got various thickness gauges here. So what I have done is uh, check out here we are with a 23 thousandths and a 22 thousandths of an inch thick feeler gauges and uh, we would take these and uh, just just put them into the fret slots and see which fits best now that one seems to go very nicely and this one is just a little too tight you can see I can get it in but but it's too tight so this one at 23 thousandths is a little too thick and this one at 22 thousandths just right so uh, there we are these fret slots are at 22 thousandths if I could fit it to the bottom of the slot with a little more snugness than that I would still call it uh, 22 of course I would try the 21 and compare them but uh, I'm gonna settle on 22 now uh, my fret tangs which I was unable to measure until I pulled them out uh, I've got my little um, uh, digital caliper and um, when I get these to the most I try and take several measurements on the tang now this is just the tang that sticks down in the slot I'm down to 29 thousandths if I pushed hard I could compress it down to about 28 so we're we're looking at about 30 there let me try a couple more just to uh, get kind of a a mind's eye kind of average. I'm not going to do any math here, but we're looking at 30 on this one and uh, 32. So if I go between the little um, cleats or tangs that they that they put in here, I'm looking at 20, 20, 22 thousandths right in that range, and the little um, the little prongs on it or teeth uh, what do you call those things on the tang itself uh, are quite a bit thicker but uh, that goes coincides right with the average and that's pretty much what we are looking for and that should be a nice snug fit that would not normally require gluing the frets in it should have pretty good grip but because of the chip out uh, propensity here and the fact that the wood is as old as it, as it is I'm going to install these frets and uh, I will drop some glue in there just to make sure that they stay rock solid and that it has the best toned possible. Uh, the nut um, off camera, it only took me about two minutes, honestly. Let's be honest. Uh, cleaned it up, it looks a lot nicer. So that nut uh, needs to be out of there when I file the fretboard it's flat again, but. Uh, it fits well and it is nice and clean now. So we're going to get started here. I'm just going to back this off a little bit. Get my sandbag back here on the bench. Don't really need those frets around here. So my sandbag is always always kind of my go-to when working on necks. I like to just create a little pocket for them to sit in. And it stabilizes it just wonderfully. This is an aluminum straight edge that I got from another vendor. This is not a Stumac tool, but it is flat. Uh, this is, <laughs> it does what it needs to do. And I got that from a company called Elmer Guitar, I think. I have purchased from Elmer Guitar. Some nice tools at uh, good prices from them. So uh, we'll see more of that. But uh, I always keep my eyes open. There are a lot of tool resources. Stumac, the most well-known. Uh, and uh, they they have good stuff so uh, no no knock on Stumac except for the price so I'm always looking out for for a deal uh, what I'm gonna do is just start just start uh, sanding away I've got 320 on the no I have 220 220 on this uh, straight uh, sanding block and we're just gonna get started by leveling it it really is a straight neck I don't have a whole lot to level but we can see here where we're sanding away the surface a little bit and getting down to some cleaner rosewood and uh, we've got a little bit of height here and along between these two frets 
and then a little bit in the first fret area. So uh, slight variations. Oh, I wanted to point out too that um, the uh, truss rod. I uh, was going to show you about the truss rod. I kind of forgot about that, but uh, the truss rod, I wanted to make sure uh, before I sand, in fact, I didn't do this, but uh, I do know that the nut is absolutely free. There's no binding on the nut and it had no tension on it. So we'll just make sure it's backed off. So no um, no back bow is, is uh, being uh, put in the neck with the truss rod. I know that because there's no tension on it. And so perfectly flat is, um, is probably what we'll uh, just end up with because I won't need to uh, put the truss rod. And you can see how nice and clear this sandpaper stays. This is that sandpaper I was telling you about in the last video. So it works really well. It's not loading up, but there sure is a lot of grime on this. Now that we have uh, some dust piling into these fret uh, divot slots, we can see where the fingers have created these little divots and uh, the dust is collected in them so you can really see where they are. And this is what I wanted to uh, ask you guys about. What do you think? You know, should I, should I fill these? I'm, I'm tending to uh, think a little more along that line. But what I want to make sure is that before I do any gluing, that uh, I uh, also sand a little bit down in those pockets because they're not clean. So uh, we're doing pretty well here. It doesn't take much, honestly. I mean, what I primarily want to do is make sure that the wood at the uh, slots is flattened out. <laughs> should wear a mask. This uh, old wood is dusty, but uh, as I was saying, the where the tangs pull up, uh, the, there's always a little bit of proud wood right there. Even though it's not chipped, you always feel a ridge after you've after you've pulled frets. So uh, I just glued this paper on using a 3M uh, 77, Super 77 spray adhesive. I've used that for about <laughs> how long? 30, 40 years, something like that. It's been around a long time, but it's a good product. And uh, so just spray it on, let it dry a little bit like contact adhesive, and then uh, put your paper on. You spray both surfaces and let it dry a little bit, about five minutes, and then stick them together, and there we go. So we're getting nice dusting and filing all the way down the fretboard, and uh, so not a whole lot of leveling needed here. Now most banjos, and especially the vintage banjos, have flat fretboards. Uh, the idea of radiusing a fretboard is relatively new, and it's taken from the uh, steel string guitars, of course, and electric guitars. Classical guitars have flat fretboards, as do traditional banjos, but You'll see the uh, radius fretboards as an option for custom-made banjos today, and some models that you'll find being made uh, are standard with um, radius fretboards. People tend to like it, or they tend to not like it, and uh, you know, I I can't tell much of a difference when I play one. Uh, honestly, it doesn't seem like a huge difference if the radius if the fretboard is radius or not. I'm so used to playing a flat fretboard. So I'm at the point now where I uh, either do or I do not fill these divots. I, I think I will sand them a little bit to clean them up. But uh, I'm kind of leaning a little more toward the idea of doing that uh, because they're fairly deep. So um, let me know what you think. I look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I'm going to make this a short video. I didn't have very much to do here in this stage, so it shouldn't take me long to get the next one out. We'll get ready to start putting frets in this neck. Uh, but we're straight. The fretboard is in really good shape other than the divots. The fret slots are clear. Uh, we have a nice flat fretboard 
and uh, of course um, I have a truss rod uh, with a nice free nut, uh, no binding here, so really no trouble all the way along the line with this other than the glued in frets. Uh, so we're going to put in some more frets here in the next video, so like and subscribe and join me next time for a little more in-depth work. Uh, this didn't really take very much, and uh, join me here at Beyond Guitars.